Eric Craig and Hammond, two firepreneurs, and this is our life today. We are doing a three-part video series. The first video is going to be about cultural experiences we had. The second video is going to be about unique experiences. And the third video is going to be about our plans for 2020. And we also have a surprise at the end of that third video. This is our manipulative way to make you watch. So the last video that was published was about Thailand, and ever since Thailand, we went to Vietnam, Japan, Egypt, Turkey, and Portugal. So first, coffee in Vietnam. By far, Vietnam coffee is, I think, based on where we've been, has been the best coffee. The Vietnamese really take a lot of pride in how they craft their coffee. We went to this place, and this guy took us behind a coffee bar and actually showed us how they make coffee, and it's all by hand. Right, action! Action! <laughs> <laughs> it's all about drawing a circle carefully, evenly, because any unnecessary power can affect your coffee taste. Carefully press it down until the end, one finger tight, and then the cap close. So when we went to Turkey, we were there for Ramadan. And that was an interesting experience because if you're not familiar with it, Ramadan is for a 30 day period. And the way that it works is they don't eat any food during the day. Or drink any water. Or drink any water. And then once the sun goes down, they can eat and drink. So what they'll do most of the time is they'll sleep during the day. The guy's sleeping, so we're gonna go pet them. Fasa. He's like. And then they'll wake up and party all night until sunrise and that's when the cutoff that's when, happens. That's when the fast starts again. Frequently throughout the day, there's mosques all throughout the cities and they all have loudspeakers. So this priest will jump on and Impressive. start singing and pray seven times a day. <laughs> and one of our Airbnbs in Istanbul was right next to a speaker. We have an interesting experience that um, Greg was not very happy about. They are getting ready to pray at exactly 1.07 p.m. I believe he forgot. Oh, here they come. <laughs> I'm afraid his focus was interrupted. It's really loud, actually. Sorry, baby. Is it over? I think so. We also went into a mosque in Turkey. That was pretty cool. It was kind of under construction, so we couldn't see a lot. That was an interesting experience. We had to take off our shoes yeah. and stuff. Well, for also a woman, I had to cover my shoulders, my knees. Yeah. So, shoulders to cover, heads covered. All right, so that was the mosque in Turkey. Next is the hieroglyphics in Egypt. So if you don't know, there's two burial sites. The first is the pyramids, obviously. That was ancient Egypt. That was like five, 6,000 years ago. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Valley of the Kings. In the Valley, the Valley, Valley of the Kings. And that is where they buried a lot of the pharaohs in the New Egypt, which still is still old. thousands of years ago. <laughs> still, yeah. But the reason that they did that is because the pyramids were basically you know, an advertisement to grave robbers to you know, come steal. Come right? steal right here. You'll never I'm find I'm buried it. here. Ah, <laughs> guess where it is. They wised up and decided to bury all the kings in dozens and dozens of randomly placed tombs in this valley. There's hardly no people here, which is always nice. So this is the tomb of Ramses III, considered the last great king of Egypt, because shortly after his reign, Egypt declined very quickly and was taken over by Alexander the Great, 300 something BC. His tomb was actually unfinished. He was always gone. He was considered a great warrior king and the workers who were building his tomb actually went on strike because he forgot to feed them. That makes sense to me. And do two more because our ticket includes three tombs. So our guide told us the best tombs to go for an additional price. We had to pay extra for the camera, which is stupid. Did it for all of you. We did it for you. We're on our way to the second tomb. So the interesting part about the tomb is that it actually descends down, like, I think you said 160 meters. Meters or steps. We'll see. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. So, 130 meters. Not, not steps. So that was the second tomb. The deepest one. 
they had the big sarcophagus in there. So this is where the king was buried. Creepy. And then it opens up into this massive chamber with this huge sarcophagus, like 12 feet. And it was cool. I ran up the stairs in the tomb. Just because. My first mistake of the day. So that was the deepest one. Now we're gonna go to the most colorful one. So this is the third tomb, the most colorful one. We came in, but there was graffiti on the side of the walls written in, I think it was Greek, our tour guide said. And that was because when Christianity was first formed, they would actually use this place to worship because it was illegal to worship in the Roman kingdom because the Romans took control over Egypt. That was pretty interesting. So the reason for this, for the people's eyes being knocked out, is because when the robbers came, they didn't want the people to see them. That's what our tour guide told us. Scared beetle. Oh, is that the mummy? That was the last tomb, the most colorful. The last royal tomb they uncovered was King Tut in 1922. We're not gonna go there because it's extra. There's actually more they haven't found yet. So they're always looking for new tombs. So they're constantly excavating this area. It's under very tight security. So the thing that stood out most to us about Japan was the vibe. We were walking around and we were seeing these people riding their little bicycles with their baskets in the front. Everything was so pristine and put together and Perfect. just the, the vibe was you know, really like Quiet. peaceful. And I'm like, man, it feels like I've I've seen this before and I couldn't put my finger on it. I was like, I think she said something like, it's just so pleasant. pleasant. <laughs> and that's when I was like, Pleasantville. If you've seen the movie, you get it. Alright, so I'm going to introduce you to the greatest invention of all time. Maybe See. not the coolest invention ever made. Rocket well, ships are pretty cool. Yeah. But at least exclusive to Japan that we should implement in the States. We should. The Japanese toilet. But this is no ordinary toilet. No, no, no. Let me show you how cool this thing is. So first of all, when you sit down, and I'm not going to sit down for you, but you'll get the idea. The toilet is heated, so when you sit down, the heater automatically turns on. So you do your business. There's toilet paper here, but you know, you don't need to wipe. Instead, you push this little button. See, that's your little butt. And then if you're a lady, that's your little female part. And what happens is a little wand comes out and it cleans your butt. So this stops it and then this adjusts the pressure. This even is an exhaust fan within the toilet. And then you're done. So when you flush, you wash your hand. <laughs> And if there was a towel here, you dry them off and you're good to go. Nice, clean booty. No wiping necessary. They have a lot of nicer toilets too. Like we went to a 7-Eleven and one of them played music for privacy. Anybody who has never traveled to Japan is missing out on are the Japanese toilets. Definitely a thing to behold and experience. The other thing that we did was a ryokan, yeah. which is basically a traditional Japanese experience. This is traditional for a ryokan. If it is cold outside, you wear this outer garment. It's actually quite hot, so I don't know why he's still in that. So he has a way cooler sash than me. Dibs. So this is our attire. Ooh. A lady in her kimono comes in and we slept on the floor or with the mats. We also decided to have a traditional Japanese dinner. There's three food groups in Japan from what we gathered. <laughs> raw fish. Raw fish. Got me a raw octopus.
Yodo! I felt the suckers running against my tongue. Eggs and rice. And more raw fish. <laughs> Let's just add raw fish twice. It's it because... it great stuff. You should stay in our yoga. Yeah, it was definitely a lot of fun. Super, super cool to have that traditional experience. And also, Greg got to experience, I guess, the onsen. Oh yeah, a traditional Japanese bath. So the traditional Japanese bath, you're supposed to get buck naked. <laughs> and I had a little bit of wine, so he felt I did it. I was buck naked in a public place, but there was nobody there. So, so I wonder if he would have done it if there were people there. But the, the point is, it, the point is, is that he got to have that experience. I did. I had that experience. All right. So that about wraps up this video. Next video, we are going to talk about some of the other experiences like, that we've never done before. Snorkeling in Vietnam. Repelling. We repelled in Vietnam. See you next time. Bye. Ancient hieroglyphics. Ancient hieroglyphics. Ancient hieroglyphics. Hieroglyphics. Ancient hieroglyphics. <laughs> the toilet is seated, so when you sit down, the toilet is seated. <laughs> it's not even nine o'clock yet, and it's already like a hundred degrees. This looks like a bat. <laughs> what are you doing? Problem is when I sit cross-legged, you can see my. We are now officially gone. Ew, me. As Greg plays with his food, it's loading up. Head and everything. <laughs>